everyone. Welcome back to the farm. Uh, it's Halloween 2020 here in East Hawaii. And today I'd like to tell you all about the members of Zingiberaceae that we grow here on the farm. Now, Zingiberaceae is the ginger and turmeric family. Uh, those kinds of plants grow really well around uh, in, in our area. It's warm and humid, and a lot of the time they don't even need a lot of soil, which is something that is a situation that we have here. Um, in fact, if you're not careful, uh, your gingers will become invasive. So a lot of decorative gingers like white ginger, yellow ginger, uh, torch ginger, and all kinds of various ornamental gingers can get uh, extremely widespread, hard to remove. They can grow to be 10, 15 feet tall. So I'm a little bit scared of gingers. We, most, so we mostly grow uh, edible gingers. Just in a minute here, just want to say hello and we'll walk around the farm and I'll show you some of the things that uh, we're growing in Zingiberaceae. See you in a second. The first member of Zingiberaceae that I'd like to show you is actually our newest one. This is a cardamom plant. That's right, cardamom is a relative of ginger and turmeric. I got this one at a local farmer's market. I've been looking for it for a while and finally found it at the farmer's market. Uh, this is a kind of a, a different from a lot of other members of Zingiberaceae where you eat the rhizome, the root. Uh, for this one, once it gets a little bit bigger, it'll put out stalks. Well, based on what I've seen in pictures, it'll put out stalks from the bottom. Then those will develop the seed pods and then the seed pod, the inside of the seed pods is the part that you eat, which is quite interesting compared to some of the other ones. I'm really looking forward to it. It's right now in kind of a low shady area like other members of uh, Zimtiberaceae. It likes to be in the shade. This one is supposed to get quite big, but again, this is just a baby. So it's doing pretty well, you know, even though it's been fairly dry lately. Look, here are some little babies coming up. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this one this one develops. It's not in a lot of soil or anything, as you can see, but gave it a little bit of mulch, a little bit of manure. Seems to be pretty happy. I'm gonna keep an eye on it because I want cardamom. I love cardamom, it's one of my favorite spices. And by the way, when I was separating it out and planting it, because there were a bunch of plants in the little uh, in the little pot I got, the smell of the roots was incredible. It was basically like cardamom the spice, but like fresh and planty and fruity. Ah, oh, just unbelievable. So we'll see if and when it actually flowers and if I get any seed pods. But I'm very happy to say that you know to be able to grow this plant at all. All right, let's move on. I'm gonna be walking through the garden. It's been pretty dry lately. Here's how it looks. Pretty normal in our area. Ohia forest, Ohia Aluhi forest. It's been pretty dry, but you know, maybe the wet season has just started, hopefully. We've been getting some clouds and a little bit more moisture rather than kind of going a whole week without rain which is entirely preposterous for our area. Anyway here is our second plant that I'd like to highlight. Now this is a really big patch of turmeric. This patch uh, is again in a low shady area and the fact that it did so well is kind of what inspired me to plant the cardamom the way that I did. Um, so as you could see this patch is very bushy lots of leaves and it's maybe the leaves are maybe three feet tall which is very impressive i haven't harvested it yet but still it's very happy in this exact spot right here the one thing that i wanted to show you is here's another uh turmeric turmeric does really well in our area it seems this there is actually i've dug in here there's no soil here. There, that's some leaf litter and a little bit of like roots, root mass from other plants, this like giant bush here. And I don't even remember planting anything here. And yet here it is. I actually even pulled a little bit of turmeric out from this area because this is the second year this is growing. 
I pulled a little bit out. I thought that I had gotten it all. Oh no, it came back. It came right back. I hadn't even gotten it all. So these guys in our area can grow in basically nothing and with even just a tiny little bit of root to start out with. It's pretty incredible. I'm a big believer in grow what grows well. So that's one of the reasons why we grow so many of these kind of members of the ginger family because they seem to do really well. So this large friend is a shampoo ginger, Awapuhi Kuahiri, here in Hawaiian, that's what it's called. And I did a whole video about this plant showing more about how it grows and how to use it. And I'll put a link to that below. Right now in late, in the, not late winter, late fall, uh, it's sort of starting to die back a little bit. Uh, all the shampoo ginger heads have already been used and, you know, they're, I toss them back in there so they're becoming mulch. This will die over the winter and then come back again in the spring. So you could see that that stuff is drying out. Here's another little area of the cardamom, one of the separated bits. This is in a bit more sunlight, so it's a little bit more yellow, but it seems to be doing pretty well here too. It's our, it's got, you know, some new leaves, a little bit of new growth down at the bottom there. So that's quite encouraging because this is a much more sunny area. Let's move on. <laughs> Taking the long way around the gardens. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. All right. This large friend, maybe about like four feet tall. This is Galangal. I planted it from a really huge section. A uh, chunk of gala gal that I got from a uh, farmer's market. There, again, there's almost no soil that it's growing in, but it seems to do fine. I think this is like a chunk of it. Yeah, I can't even move that. There it is. There's a chunk of the gala gal. We didn't even split it up, we just planted it. That's a fungus. Anyway. I haven't harvested this yet, but I'm just happy that it seems to be doing really well again with little little attention. Moving on. So this is so this is the actual edible ginger. Uh, I, what is it like? Zingiber officia officinal official? I don't remember. But this is like edible ginger that you might find in a store. This is how the plant looks. It's kind of, again, in, late in the season, so a lot of them are kind of dying back. They had put up these uh, these flower stalks. Now this, again, this isn't the, the stalk. This isn't the flower itself. This is like the flower area. I don't know what it's called. Flower house, and then little individual flowers come up out of those. They're actually very, very pretty. They're like multiple colors, teeny little flowers. This one's already dying back. So that's pretty fun. I'd never seen a ginger flower before. And this is in full sun, so it's kind of amazing that it was doing anything at all. They are quite dry though, but again, they will grow in full sun. Next, we have. This one looks quite similar to the turmeric, but it's hard, a little bit hard, but you could see there's a little bit of a dark stripe toward the middle. And when it was, the plant was a little bit younger, when the leaves were younger, the dark stripe was really pronounced. It was like a skunk stripe. Whoops. Going right down the middle like that, like a black loose stripe. And that's the clue that tells you what this plant is, which is a uh, black turmeric. It's also sometimes called blue turmeric. It is apparently its own species. I've never harvested it. I just planted this from a couple segments that a friend gave me. So that was, uh, you know, maybe one day I'll harvest it. It seems to be doing well. We have it in two sections, one right here, another one right here. This one's getting quite yellow and you can't even, the black stripe is kind of gone now. You can't even see it anymore. So yeah, 
And then the last thing I want to show you isn't a member of Zingiberaceae, the family, but it is a member of Zingiberales, which is like one level above family. And this is, a, I believe this is a banana canna. And the canna lilies are uh, not Zingiberaceae, but again, they're, they're part of this, they're, they're relatives, right? And this also has an edible rhyme zone that uh, I, this was given to me by the same friend that gave me the, um, the black turmeric. And it is apparently boiled and mashed and it might taste like bananas. He never has had it himself. He was given it himself by a friend. It does make beautiful leaves though. And it seems to need almost no care stuck it in the ground. Look, I love these gorgeous leaves. They're just stunning. This is our first year planting it. But it's beautiful as an ornamental, even if you, you know, don't harvest it for eating. Beautiful. So I believe that's basically it for what we have to show you. Um, in terms of the gingers that we grow, there's quite a wide variety. I was doing research for, uh, for this video, and you would not believe how many more edible gingers there are. Basically, my current hypothesis on it is that everywhere in the world that's, you know, warm and humid, where gingers are likely to grow, people have found their own varieties and cultivated their own varieties that uh, they eat the rhizomes of, that they use the rhizomes and other parts of the plant for uh, medicinal purposes. And it's just a really versatile plant family that has many different species in it that people use. So what my question for you is, do gingers and friends grow well in your area? What kind of members of Cinchiboraceae do you grow? You know, are there any questions that you have? They grow pretty easily for us here. I, I'll be honest, I don't, you know, if you need tips on cultivating it, a lot of these